Hi, I'm James Schilling Law, and I'm here today with I.L. Carlin, who's the Tourism Commissioner North America for the Israel Ministry of Tourism, and he's based here in New York. Um, and we're here, obviously, to talk about what's going on with tourism to Israel after this horrible, horrible uh, war between Israel and uh, Hamas. And of course, the, the great tragedy that happened in Israel, and now we still have it. So what does a tourism department do when there's really not many, much tourism? And maybe there is a little. We'll talk to Ayala about that, and we'll see what the future holds for Israel tourism. We're all hopeful that this situation will be resolved sooner than later. And you're going to find out all about that on Insider Travel Report. Now, first of all, I, uh, uh, my sympathies to you and your country uh, for what happened on October 7th. It was a horrible, horrible thing. And now, of course, we're now finding ourselves into a pretty, pretty um, bad war between Israel and Hamas. And we're all hopeful that some it will come to a resolution, as I said, sooner than later. But you actually, this is the ironic part about it. Um, first of all, how was tourism from the U.S. to Israel doing before October 7th when Hamas attacked Israel? Yeah, well, first of all, James, thank you for, for you know, your warm support. And I have to say that uh, we've received such a warm embrace from the travel industry in general in the U.S. And uh, it's, you know, it's, it's heartfelt and we're, we're, we appreciate it so much. Um, Tourism before uh, October seventh was booming. Uh, we we finished September with almost eight hundred thousand um, tourists to Israel. That's ten percent above where we were in twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were looking to the twelve months before before October seventh, we, we crossed the million. So that means that if if things would have continued in the same pace, we would have finished 2023 with more than a million tourists. We're estimating wow. at 1.1 million, which was about, which was over 10% more than what, what it was in 2019, which was our previous record year. So it was looking phenomenal. Um, and, and yeah, so, so now after, after the attack and after fighting started, uh, you know, Air, air air capacity has decreased dr dramatically. Right. Though there are daily flights going from the U.S. to Israel, uh, operated by Al Al from multiple cities in the U.S. And uh, the airport in Israel is still operating. It's still Israelis, open, I know. Yeah, still open. Israelis are still flying back and forth. Yeah. It, also, outgoing tourism from Israel has obviously decreased dramatically. Um, you know, the, the population is is concerned about the war and and, and the economic situation. Uh, but there still is travel going back and forth, and and there are other airlines flying into Israel as well. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about them because some, some of them were rather surprising as we discussed yeah. before we started this interview. But I think just a week before you had launched actually a new tourism campaign, if I saw. Yeah, we did. It 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 what it wasn't a, a, like a yearly campaign. It was kind of like a a a, a, a specific like. At the moment, campaign also based right. on on indications we got actually from 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 Google and other bodies that people are recognizing Israel as kind of like a uh, not spur of the moment, but kind of like you know, I, I want to go to somewhere that has something exciting. And Israel was actually picking up in those metrics in in, in global searches, so we wanted to play on that. So. Uh, so we actually launched that, but you know, with some messaging and also a video that kind of demonstrates. Um, Israel is part of that trend of, of of take me anywhere that has something, and 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 Israel popping up as on that on the radar for those categories. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, and and uh, but that, that that happened about well, a that week that that, that campaign is so, not going to go anywhere this year right now. Uh, maybe yeah, we can revive no. it next year, but uh, yeah. um, now. Is any you said mentioned that uh, Israelis and maybe uh, American uh, uh, Americans who have families in Israel they probably are still going. But any, is there any tourism going now? So there are, and that is something that we find very encouraging. There is uh, travel that is, um, it's it bases off of solidarity travel. Right. So there are different solidarity missions, but there's also missions that are. More of the voluntourism um, realm. Right. Um, last week, there were there was a group of farmers flying in from Utah and Montana to help uh, to help Israeli farmers. Uh, firefighters coming in, 
There are multiple uh, groups of doctors and other uh, people of different occupations coming in, and 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 they're also staying in Israel. So I mean, right. they're 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 doing what they're doing, but they're also still booking some hotels. So so you know, we I guess you wanted to ask, but I already say that the, the travel industry in Israel has really. Um, gone into like full support of the situation so yeah you actually you put out a whole press release about that which we we printed uh which was yeah. kind of interesting about what is a what does a tourism industry do when tourism is on the decline or maybe non-existent and and it was very interesting to see but we'll we'll talk about that because okay. that's really interesting now but, the, but uh, there is there is a certain amount of travel going in and it is mostly american travel going into israel um unless from other destinations um you know, that's that's part of the, the strong you know connection between the US and Israel. So um yep, there is. There, well, there is if I if I had if I had the commissions on all the American officials going over to Israel like Blinken and uh, our defense secretary, that would be a pretty yeah. good business. But uh, but it's also a lot of grassroots travel and, and we know that in December and January there are more and more planning. So kind of like after the phase of shock and everything. So people are are, are looking to to come and support in in person travel. Uh, yeah. forms of, of well, well i just as a personal side I, I was there during some bad times like when the infatata started years ago and boy I'm, I, I was great there was no there was nobody around the attractions and you know you could go anywhere you wanted uh, not to say that's what you want but it was a wonderful it was a great time to be in israel uh it's a little different today but it's you know i'm not planning to go to near gaza but it would be certainly i would go up north or down to a lot or anywhere else right now myself now uh, you, you know, we're talking about the airports. Now, we said Ben Gurion Airport is still operating normally at reduced capacity and uh, allows going in. Are there any U.S. airlines have begun? I know a lot of them extended their cancellation of flights for another month or so. Uh, any any prospects they're going to return soon? So they're all reviewing um, the situation week by week. Um, and they uh, have all indicated to us that um, – that once they see the potential, you know, in terms of of it being safe for their teams, and also seeing the potential of of some more people resuming travel. So, in the first step, first phase, their New York based flights or either Newark or JFK flights will be going back, and and that's reviewed on a week by week basis. So that that could be something that you know um, next week or in two weeks uh, they resume. Uh, so we're 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 very optimistic. You know, we're very happy that that's you know they they, they really see the the importance of of the routes uh, going in, and I'm assuming that the uh, the uh, the other routes that they operate will resume, uh, you know, a few months later. Uh, very much uh, uh, um, depends on demand. Yeah, um, yeah. But you, then you were mentioned to me earlier when a very surprising Etihad is still flying to uh, exactly. Ben Gurion. Etihad and Fly Dubai uh, yeah. are flying. There's still some smaller European carriers that are flying into Israel. Uh, those are mostly uh, Eastern European or Eastern Med um, low-cost carriers, but Etihad is operating a daily flight to Tel Aviv. Uh, and, and then, I, uh, I believe, when at the beginning, Turkish Airlines was still flying. I don't know if they're doing it or not you know, anymore. Yeah, no, I currently no. Okay. Uh, again, with all the airlines, it is for for a lot of them, it is like the American Airlines. It is a week by week decision making process for them. Uh, but Etihad didn't stop flying and that's uh yeah that's they're, that's, they're that's, that's still very still interesting very interesting that they did that but now and you started to mention it uh you know what what is israel tourism doing now that, that the country really isn't getting a lot of visitors there's some uh but what's what's your role i understand you've launched a number of initiatives as we reported in in that pre that release that you sent out um you're providing i think one is you're providing housing and hotels and hostels for those displaced or evacuated during the conflict right that's one one thing you're doing that's one thing that's being done, and that's taking care of of, of those immediate needs, uh, and really all the hotels and the hotel association and all and all, and all the different uh, providers of of different accommodation forms uh, really uh, stepped up and and are working to to help house. The government came in to uh, help fund those efforts, so to to, to provide the hotels with funding uh, to keep them going, and then after after. Um, uh, the families will leave. We're going to support with them renovating, bringing back mm. the hotels to be situated to to host tourists. Uh, but the other, you know, the the tour operators in Israel are helping um, 
the families, the evacuate families with daily activities, uh, the different parks and sites are offering um, activities and support as well. So the entire industry really has, uh, has you know, is, rose to the occasion and are helping uh, the evacuees. Also, a lot of the people within the tourism industry have been called up to reserve duties. So obviously right. they, uh, you know, they, they, they are active in a different way. Uh, supporting but, the but the hotels are not closing, right? They're still open. They're not closing. Several hotels are are, are also staying open for uh, the for what we said before: the general travel or delegations coming, or solidarity trips, or people that are coming to visit friends and family. Uh, the situation. So in Tel Aviv, in Jerusalem, and in Haifa, there are also hotels that are con- that continue operating. Um, in a more or less normal uh, way to 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 to, to provide a um, a solution for, for for people that are traveling into Israel. It's sort of a reminiscent a way of uh, during the COVID uh, pandemic, it's where you get hotels that are sort of in hibernation but not totally closing, and they're using that time, as you mentioned earlier, to do some renovations and uh, you know really kind of get their their. Yeah. Yeah, every, I think the situation right now is, is the hotels are in pretty high capacity. There, there, there are there is a very big number of evacuees from the Gaza region and also from the frontline border in the north. And so, um, most of the hotel space and rooms are occupied. Um, so, yeah, that's a bit different in that respect. But it's uh, they're all active. Yeah, and then you mentioned that. I mean, a lot of times you have Israelis abroad who are you're bringing home. Um, you know, ensuring that, you know, they may have roles to play in, uh, in the country right now. And so they're coming back, obviously, on El Al or a carrier that flies into Ben Gurion as well, right? Exactly. So there are El Al is flying. There are two other Israeli carriers, Israel and Arkia, that are flying from uh, Europe and also from um, other places in the Middle East and Asia. Uh, there was a big effort in the first uh, two weeks of, of helping Israelis return to Israel. Uh, but right now we're in a certain situation where that that has been uh, that 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 need and demand has been taken care of, and right now there still are the, the flights going in. But Israelis that that uh, had to get back to Israel uh, got back to Israel yeah. already. And, now, uh, what's the role of the tourism ministry? What's your role right now? Uh, uh, you know, what how, what are, what are, what are you focusing on um, uh, as as tourism commissioner here? So we're currently uh, focused on getting information out as well. We're working uh, with media to get, you know, the positive stories coming out. Uh, you know, just like you said last week, we were, you know, we were informed about what the Israeli tourism industry is doing. Uh, we're, we're getting out the word and we'll be getting out the word more about uh, the different uh, travel options that, that are starting to form, uh, either volunteering or solidarity or others. We're working a lot on our, you know, Again, it's going to end, you know, and we're working on our day after plans, kind of uh, working together with the industry, getting their feedback. What will help uh, those selling Israel to regain the confidence of their uh, customers? What will help from our side to work with them? And we're, we're working right now with our headquarters on on putting together our plan, our budget needs, um, working on information and, and materials that would be appropriate uh, to get out, kind of reflect uh, what is happening in Israel when it's done so that we could sh- show uh, the travel trade and also the general public what Israel is like right after it's over and encourage people to to, to, to think of Israel again as a destination that they're going to travel to. And so you're getting ready for that, hopefully. And again, I guess my next question is, you know, let's say best case scenario that let's say the war ends maybe by the end of the year, because this could happen quickly. Um, or or at least within six months. I can't imagine it would go that long because at this point, uh, you know, Israel has entered Gaza and is is you know hopefully taking out the the terrorists that it want it needs to get. And I think there will be an end of it. So how long do you think it will take Israel to ramp up tourism again when the war ends for all intents and purposes? So that's you know I'm I'm basing my uh, what I'm saying now on our on on past um, events that have happened in the past decade or two and kind of like uh, assessing what we see now of what we're hearing from the trade, from airlines and from and also from from how the industry is really prepared to receive tourists back. So once it ends, um, like I said before, hotels will have to kind of renovate and readjust, I think, uh, for 
for major fl inflow of tourism, it will take a, you know, a month or two in, until the hotels are back to operational mode. Um, and from, you know, I, I think we can also look at what happened after COVID. But we, we Israel, Israel is a destination that has a few uh, very strong audiences that 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 are that want to travel to Israel, right. and right. no matter what, you know, and it could the so we 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 very much assume that that um, Christian travel and Jewish travel will be the first to return. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think that in insignificant numbers, I think that they'll be in significant numbers. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there'll be a return. Uh, my assumption is the first half a year will be kind of a, the beginning of it. And after half a year, also once people and the tour operators sending people to Israel and the airlines all kind of regain their confidence and see that it's, it's, it's functioning and operating uh, that after half a year, we'll, we'll go back to, to seeing increases when will we be back in the you know 2023 numbers that's hard to guess yeah my assumption is that in that in 25 we'll be back to there i mean yeah, especially was, since yeah. you were going to do so well this year originally so it's kind of this yeah. and you answer my question about you know i think i assume when you you start doing tourism campaigns you're really going to be targeting those who are supportive travelers like from the uh, Jewish and from the Christian community that exactly. uh, really, even during some of the the, the bad, worst times in Israel, many of them were still traveling. It wasn't quite the same as this, but uh, they they were still going back because that, you know, they have incredible sites they want to visit. They want to be supportive of Israel. And that's what you're going to be kind of get your yeah. first tourism back will be those groups, right? Yeah, we're thinking of a three-phased campaign. Um, one would be the first phase would be for those for those uh, audiences that have a strong affinity with Israel. The second phase will be for um, those who were in the consideration stage before fighting broke out, right. uh, and we want to 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 to, ha to to encourage them to rethink that. And then our third phase will just be back to a type of a, a general campaign and encouraging general travel to Israel. No, that's great. I and mean, we do hope that's that's how it plays out. Um, now, um, is there anything else you want to tell our 127,000 travel advisors about travel to Israel today and what it hopefully will be like in the future? Well, you know, we want to, again, express our gratitude to the many, many uh, tour operators, travel agencies, travel advisors and companies that were reaching out to us and and uh, you know, we 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 still we we decided that we're still going to attend events. We're still going to go and and interface with the travel industry. And every place we go, we really feel such a such support and a warm embrace. So I, you know, I want to thank everybody for that. Uh, and, and, and we're conveying that to the travel trade in Israel to keep them encouraged and to know, um, you know. We need to plan for when it ends. It's going to end, and uh, you know, keep keep Israel. You know, top of mind when it does uh, end. We want to encourage people who have, uh, you know, who have clients that are booked to uh, to postpone rather than cancel. Um, you know, yeah. keep keep those plans going. I think what we learned during COVID is that the the travel industry became an expert in keeping those plans alive and just rolling them forward and making sure that when their client wants to travel, they'll have the opportunity. So we want to encourage that. And then just to follow us on, you know, on social media and our website and 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 publications, just just like yours, you know, we're trying to get uh, the information out there. Keep, uh, you know, keep keep a positive, you know, uh, show show what is positive. Um, and yeah, just to you know to 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 keep keep us, you know, in in people's thoughts and prayers. Absolutely. Well, you certainly are. And uh, and now you mentioned, you know, where they can go to travel advisors can go to find out about both conditions in Israel, especially related to travel and tourism. Where can they go in terms of websites, social media? Uh, where should they get their information? So we have our 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 websites are all within the domain of Israel uh, dot travel. Um, and we have a, a Christian specific website, which is Holy Land dot Israel dot travel and an agent website, which is agents.israel.travel. Uh, we, we have uh, our social media handles, our Visit Israel on Instagram on um, and on Facebook. Uh, we also do have a, a you know, fairly inactive uh, um, Twitter, but, but on Instagram and on uh, Facebook, the uh, Visit Israel uh, handles. Um, 
And uh, yeah, you know, that's just, that's, just that's keep up to date using those channels and see what happens. And exactly. I know for my, my case, I would be, you know, I'm, I, because I, I traveled during COVID I've traveled everywhere in the world. I would definitely want to get back to Israel sooner than later. Uh, and I would certainly travel during this period, although I'm, you know, I'm, it's obviously something that travel advisors can't convince people who, you know, you can't force people to travel, but you can get people who are sympathetic and, and want to support Israel to travel again sooner rather than later. And we'll see what happens. And we we do hope that is indeed the case. And uh, thank you so much for, for coming on 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 this this uh, little video uh, and telling us what's going on, because I know a lot of people. What do you do when tourism just at least all but stops except for a certain groups? And you guys are doing actually an amazing job. I mean, maybe maybe you had a little experience during COVID, but uh, as, we, as we all did. But this was another thing, and it was clearly uh, not a welcome development, given that you were going to have such a great year. And we do hope those times come back sooner rather than later. Thank you so much. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report. <laughs>